Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Good evening and welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm Sam Albanese of the National Weather Service. And to start with, we'll take a look at our watches and warnings map, or warnings actually, and advisories. Up along the uh, eastern Arctic coast, essentially east of Barrow, um, we do have blizzard conditions and wind chills to 60 below expected through about noon tomorrow. So pretty uh, dangerous conditions up along that, that uh, region of the state. Also, uh, down in uh, the southwest part of the state, we do have uh, snow with blowing snow expected for tomorrow, well, overnight tonight into tomorrow morning until about 9 a.m. in the morning. Expect anywhere uh, be from between 4 to 7 inches of snow. And with the windy conditions, uh, blowing snow, reducing your visibility, and we could just ignore this red down in southeast Alaska. That's not supposed to be there. Anyway, taking a look now at our satellite imagery, and we can see what's going on around the, uh, the North Pacific. Essentially, uh, we have this outflow coming down across the Bering Sea. The low pressure is actually off the screen here a little bit, but also down south of the eastern Aleutian Islands. When you put the loop in motion, the thing to be focused on is how this air is just basically streaming across the Bering Sea, and this is pretty cold air. So um, that's going to be uh, fueling the windy, uh, showery type conditions out in the Aleutian Islands that we'll be talking about uh, a little bit later. Taking a look at the satellite imagery over the state of Alaska itself, and um, basically, most of the uh, mainland was generally uh, cloud-free and very cold. Down in the Gulf of Alaska and southwestern Alaska, we do have this system that was coming up uh, south of Kod uh, Kodiak Island in the Alaska Peninsula, and there was a bit of a cloud shield that moved over the south-central region of the state this afternoon, but mid to high-level clouds not really going to have an impact. In fact, normally you'd want that type of cloud cover uh, to help uh, keep your low temperatures from dropping too low, but I don't think that's going to be much of an impact. And then uh, taking a look at the loop in southeast Alaska, low pressure off Haida Gwaii. Um, some rain was falling in the southern panhandle there, but generally speaking, uh, partly to mostly cloudy conditions up into the northern panhandle. Taking a look at today's weather map, here's that system that was coming in uh, across uh, Haida Gwaii. A little bit of rain in the southern panhandle, as I alluded to. Some clouds as you move on up into the central panhandle and up into the northern panhandle, up through the uh, White Pass, Chilkoot Pass region, and even over towards uh, Yakutat. Although Yakutat wasn't uh, in the precipitation, or actually if they were, it was rain. There's that snow line along the Arctic frontal boundary there. Along the south central region of the state, basically right along the coast itself, Prince William Sound, southern Kenai Peninsula, cloudy conditions further uh, north the Anchorage area on up into the Sitna Valley, Copper River Basin, clear cold conditions, same thing uh, uh, up into the interior. A lot of the uh, fog that was occurring around the uh, interior, this is typical with this real cold air in the valleys, that radiational cooling type fog, it gets trapped in the valleys, so it's patchy fog, where, but where it's at, it, it can be pretty dense. Across the Alaska Peninsula here in southwestern Alaska, we're already starting to pick up the snow with blowing snow in the Bristol Bay area rain across the Alaska Peninsula and also out into the Pribloff Islands there was some snow with blowing snow as well. Coming back around the back side of this low pressure system across the eastern to the central Aleutian Islands, rain or snow showers were occurring there. Taking a look now at the forecast for tonight, southeast Alaska generally pretty benign, um, cloudy conditions, chance of some rain in the southern panhandle. All along the, along the north Gulf Coast generally cloudy conditions. The cloud shield should end right at about the uh, northern Cook Inlet region clear cold conditions as you move on up into the Susitna Valley Copper River Basin as well as the eastern interior right on up to the uh, south slopes of the Brooks Range as well as over across northwestern Alaska. Cloud cover across the southwest part of the state. Um, poor drawing on my part, snow with blowing snow in the Bristol Bay area, rain and snow mixed across the Alaska Peninsula changing to all rain by the time you get out towards uh, Cold Bay. Rain and snow mixed over the eastern Aleutian Islands. Uh, snow with some blowing snow in the Pribloff Islands can be expected. And then out across the remainder of the Aleutian Islands, some snow showers and with the uh, strong northerly winds, some uh, blowing snow conditions there as well. Taking a look at the forecast now for Tuesday. Southeast Alaska, again, pretty benign, cloudy conditions, not a lot going on there. You might see some snow up into the northern panhandle up through the uh, 
Haynes Skagway area actually up into the pass. Uh, maybe even a little bit of blowing snow with that as well. Over the real action is going to be over into southwestern Alaska and uh, Bristol Bay. Snow with blowing snow there. A uh, mixture of rain and snow over Kodiak Island. Some rain showers across the Alaska Peninsula with snow and blowing snow across the Pribloff Islands as well. Rain showers out across the eastern Aleutian Islands. And then as you move out a little bit further to the west over the central Aleutian Islands, rain and snow showers mixed are what we're anticipating there. And then out into the extreme western Aleutian Islands, some snow showers and likely with the strong northerly winds, some blowing snow. Clear cold conditions across the majority of the mainland, uh, basically eastern interior right on up over towards Cotsview Sound. High pressure over the mainland, there's a vigorous low pressure system up into the Arctic. It's causing uh, some stronger winds right along that eastern Arctic coast and expect the uh, blizzard type conditions and low wind chills to persist up there until about noon tomorrow, um, but may extend a little bit longer. And even once it does start to relax a little bit, still gonna be some pretty cold conditions and low wind chills as well. The blowing snow may not be as bad. Um, taking a look now at the forecast for Wednesday. Low pressure south of the Alaska Peninsula with the lobe of the low pressure extending on out towards Kodiak Island. And then basically a trough of low pressure extending across much of the uh, Gulf of Alaska. Arctic frontal boundary, basically the northern panhandle right on along the north Gulf Coast down to the Alaska Peninsula. This should uh, be bringing a nice surge of moisture on up into southeast Alaska. Nothing like last week that was causing all the heavy rains there, but you are going to see some rain in the southern panhandle. I know that's not welcome news in Ketchikan, but you will be seeing some rain on Wednesday. Mixture of rain and snow as you move on further north into the panhandle uh, into the uh, uh, Juneau area. And then once you get up into the northern panhandle itself, up towards uh, Haines and Skagway and, and through the passes, some snow with blowing snow is possible there. Moving on over towards Prince William Sound, a mixture of rain and snow right along the outer coastal areas ex extending on down towards Kodiak Island and then keeping, uh, moving, keep moving to the uh, southwest across the Alaska Peninsula, a mixture of rain and snow as well there. This northeasterly and northerly flow across the eastern Bering Sea with that cold air coming off the mainland is going to result in snow shower type conditions over the uh, eastern Bering Sea across the Pribloff Islands continuing. So snow showers with some blowing snow can be expected there. Then out across the central Aleutian Islands, and again, you can see this nice tight pressure gradient, snow showers over the central Aleutian Islands with, uh, uh, with the wind, so some blowing snow reducing your visibility basically below a mile, and then some snow showers out over the western Aleutian Islands. Taking a look now at temperatures, excuse me, around the state today, southeast Alaska, Temperatures generally in the 30s throughout much of the panhandle. Uh, Yakutat's temperature is missing, but it was also in the 30s as well today. And then we get over towards uh, Prince William Sound in the mid-20s in the northern part of the Sound to, uh, well, in, in uh, southeast uh, part of the Sound in Cordoba, 34 over at Middleton Island. Temperatures, as you can see, as we move a little bit further to the west and inland, uh, Kenai Peninsula in the teens, and then once you get into the northern inlet, temperatures into the single digits, and they're already dropping uh, below zero across some parts of the Anchorage area. Sub-zero readings uh, into the uh, Susitna Valley. Temperatures only warmed up into the minus teens in the Copper River Basin, moving on over into the eastern interior in that Tanana Valley region. As you can see, some of the temperatures were in the minus teens, but uh, Fairbanks only got up to about 31 below by 4 p.m. this afternoon. So pretty cold conditions, uh, basically uh, a, uh, the first real good taste of winter for much of the state is occurring uh, over the last couple of days now. And then on up into the, uh, towards the Eastern Brooks Range in the upper Yukon Valley, you can see your temperatures really didn't warm up much at all today in the minus 30s and minus 40s. Eastern Brooks Range, as you can see, 49 below. I believe that's at Circle, so pretty frigid conditions there. Along the Arctic coast itself, pretty frigid conditions as well, minus teens and minus 20s to even the minus 30s over the northwest Arctic coast. But the important thing to remember here is especially this eastern Arctic coast with the winds and the wind chills, wind chills to 60 below there. Over towards the uh, Seward Peninsula, Cotsview Sound area, 26 below there. Temperatures in the minus teens uh, over towards Nome. South, uh, as we move on over to the uh, Yukon Delta in the minus teens to the minus single digits. And as we keep on moving towards southwestern Alaska, as you can see, temperatures in the Bristol Bay area in the uh, single digits at Dillingham, 25 at King Salmon, 
Uh, basically, once those winds uh, really got a, became established and you started seeing the snow to fall, warm things up. Mid upper 30s to low 40s across the Alaska Peninsula, quite a contrast in temperatures there. 20s in the uh, Pribilof Islands, near 40 at uh, Dutch Harbor, and in the 30s across the Aleutian Islands. For our low temperatures tonight, expect southeast Alaska to basically stay in the mid-20s to uh, upper 30s throughout much of the region. Some areas might even stay in the low 40s. Right along the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, uh, the coastal areas in the mid-20s drops off quite a bit as you move inland. Single digits and then sub-zero readings over the south central region. Copper River Basin, expect your temperatures to remain in the minus teens. Eastern interior, very cold conditions here, minus 40s to the uh, low uh, minus 50s. The Arctic coast temperatures basically staying in the minus 20s, minus 30s, but the wind chills are the real big uh, concern there, especially over the eastern Arctic coast. Uh, temperatures uh, sub-zero across the uh, Seward Peninsula region, right on over towards the uh, Yukon Delta. Single digits uh, to teens in the Bristol Bay area, 30s across the Alaska Peninsula to near 40. Uh, 30s along the Aleutian Islands and temperatures right around 20 in the Preblof Islands. For highs tomorrow, temperatures in southeast Alaska, similar to what you are seeing today, mid, to, uh, mid 30s to low 40s in the southern Panthers and the mid 20s in the north, 20s along the north Gulf Coast, single digits to above to teens below over much of the eastern interior here. Temperatures are not going to see much warming over the eastern interior, minus 30s uh, for your highs up into the upper Yukon Valley. The Arctic coastal areas temperatures may warm up a little bit, minus teens, minus 20s. South, western Alaska, the Seward Peninsula, minus uh, single digits above and below. Same thing for the Yukon Cuscoquim Delta. Bristol Bay, expect your temperatures to be in the teens to, to mid 20s. And then the Alaska Peninsula, much warmer conditions, 30s to low 40s. Uh, 40s, uh, low 40s over the eastern Aleutian Islands, mid 30s over the central Aleutian Islands, with temperatures in the mid 20s in the Pribilof Islands. Taking a look now at our flying weather for tomorrow. VFR conditions in southeast Alaska, marginal to IFR conditions in the uh, Kodiak Island area, particularly on the south side of the island. Marginal to IFR conditions, predominantly IFR conditions in the Bristol Bay area. Although during the course of the day, once that snow and blowing snow uh, subsides, you'll see conditions improving there. Marginal conditions on the south side of the Alaska Peninsula with some IFR conditions over the uh, central Aleutian Islands right on up through the uh, Pribilof Islands and just off the coast of the Kuskokwim Delta, some marginal to IFR conditions there. Up along the Arctic coast with our blizzard conditions anticipated there, IFR conditions over the eastern Arctic coast to marginal conditions over the eastern Brooks Range and some marginal conditions and low ceilings over the uh, central Arctic coast in the Barrow area. For our passes tomorrow, expect VFR conditions for Anaktubik as well as Adigan Pass. Down to the Alaska Range for Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, IFR conditions on the, uh, the uh, Bristol Bay side. The Cook Inlet side probably going to be a little bit better. Taking a look uh, further north along the Alaska Range, VFR conditions for Rainy Pass as well as Windy Pass. Continuing along the Alaska Range at Isabel Pass, expect VFR conditions and VFR conditions for Mentasta Pass. Moving on down to the Chugach Mountains, expect VFR conditions for Tanita Pass as well as Portage Pass. And then down into southeast Alaska, expect VFR conditions for both Chilkoot and White Pass. Taking a look now at our freezing levels. As you would suspect, freezing levels at the surface for the majority of the mainland, sloping up to about 1 to 2,000 feet in southern southeast Alaska, right around 1,000 feet over uh, the Kodiak Island area, and about 1,000 feet across the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutian Islands. For our icing tomorrow, basically the main focus for the icing will be where that low pressure system in the snow as expected in the precipitation. Kodiak Island, southwestern Alaska, the Bristol Bay area, down to the Alaska Peninsula, the eastern Aleutian Islands, to central Aleutian Islands. Light isolated, isolated moderate rime icing from your freezing level to about 12,000 feet. Now for our jet stream tomorrow, basically your jet stream starting off at about 105 knots off the coast of Japan, comes up across the Kamchatka Peninsula, drops off to 55 knots, accelerates to 90 knots, coming down across the western Aleutian Islands, has a big loop south of that low-pressure system uh, south of the Alaska Peninsula at about 125 knots, drops off to 60 knots in the Gulf of Alaska, and then across the uh, southern panhandle at about 90 knots. Moving on down to that 9,000-foot level, basically 15 to 20 knot winds over southeast Alaska, light winds over the majority of the mainland, except up to the uh, uh, northeast corner of the state where you can expect about 20 to 25 knot winds there. 
about 30 to 40 knot winds across the Alaska Peninsula, 20 knots over towards the Pribloff Island. And then over the Aleutian Islands, expect about 30 to 40 knot winds coming across the Western Bering Sea and the Western Aleutian Islands. Down to the 3,000 foot level, 15 knot winds in Southeast Alaska, about 20 knots coming over the uh, North Gulf Coast there. 40 knot winds coming across the Kodiak Island area and the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, 15 knot winds over the mainland with about 30 knot winds coming out of the uh, Norton Sound area. Stronger winds as we get over the eastern Bering Sea at about 45 knots in the Pribloff Islands and then the western Bering Sea at about 55 knots and northwest Alaska about 10 to 15 knot winds there. For our turbulence tomorrow, turbulence across Kodiak Island and the Bristol Bay area, some isolated moderate turbulence below 3,000 feet there and also over the central Aleutian Islands. That wraps up this portion of the show. Enjoy the segment and come back for the marine forecast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Harry Keeling, and on behalf of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media, welcome to Hangar Flying. Tonight, we welcome back Brian Hazley. Brian was on last time. Brian works for LifeMed, the safety manager there, and uh, has an undergraduate degree in aeronautical science and a master's degree in, in, in basically aviation or safety science. So he's well qualified uh, to do the job he's been hired to do. And it's, and it's good to be able to talk to them about some of the elements of their safety program. Brian, welcome back. Thanks. Great to be back. So we talked a little bit about risk assessment last time. And one of the questions I didn't get a, a chance to ask you, when your crews are filling out or completing this risk assessment, is, is it a, based on a numer numerical score or is it just subjective? It is, uh, it is a numerical score. Um, for the flight and actually our ground portion as well, it's all a numerical score. Uh, running through the work environment that they're headed to, um, the uh, various conditions of runways, lighting, things like that, uh, experience. Um, based on the value that they get, there may be uh, absolutely nothing wrong um, according to the risk matrix. Other times there will be high values, and those values won't necessarily mean that the transport cannot happen, but that a, another opinion needs to come in, usually the administrator on call or another supervisor of some sort. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and one of the things you mentioned, but I would like you to mention it again because I, I think it, it, it must be a, a very important part of, of your um, risk mitigation, and that is the isolation of the uh, pa patient's condition from the flight crew or the pilot. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's fairly standard uh, throughout our industry to keep the pilots from that information when the call first comes in. Uh, it, it ensures that the, the go or no-go decision is completely based on uh, elements that are directly related to flying. And uh, we, we, we like to have our, our pilots focused uh, on that aspect of the operation and we don't want them to get too involved um, emotionally with, with that decision. I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say, I'm going to guess, knowing how often accidents and mishaps lead to changes in policy, I'm guessing that's probably a result of one or more accidents where that didn't happen and people learned the lesson. Yes, yes, definitely. Hey, you know, another thing I, I really appreciated when you and I are talking is it sounds like you have a pretty robust debriefing program. You want to talk about that? Certainly. Um, we have a debrief process that uh, is followed after every single flight. Um, we use it to capture um, anything that uh, has happened, good, bad, or ugly, on the, on the transport that has just happened. Uh, usually there's nothing to discuss, and so there will be a form that's distributed and everyone signs off and doesn't write anything, and that's just fine if everyone believes that the transports uh, happened as, as it was planned and, and nothing came up unexpectedly, then that's a good thing. Um, there are times where the form will be distributed and people write down comments uh, on mitigations that could have happened before a flight, and that type of information is very valuable to us. Uh, we, we take those and uh, try to implement those suggestions as best we can into future transports to ensure that um, uh, they'll be improved. Okay. You know, I want to go back to something because it just occurred to me that I, I, I made an inference that wasn't, I didn't intend to. When I said the, the, um, the policy came 
from an accident. I certainly didn't mean your company. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean from the industry. Yes, so yeah. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't your company, but uh, uh, I wanted to make that clear so our audience didn't misinterpret that. Um, so one of the questions I always ask my guests is, and you're a pilot, experienced pilot, um, you're a safety person, you, you, you're dedicated to aviation safety. What one thing do you think would help improve aviation safety in Alaska? Um, collectively, um, it's, it's all communication. Um, as you did mention, I do have some flying experience myself. I do, uh, um, aviation safety is, is my job, um, but I, I can't do it alone. It's all about communication. So if anyone is going flying, especially in Alaska, as, as diverse and uh, versatile as the environment is up here, um, if you're going somewhere that you have not been before, definitely get a hold of someone that you know has, uh, knows the area, knows the weather, knows how quickly things can change. Uh, that's the most valuable information that you're going to get, and um, it's it's going to take everyone, again, communicating with one another, uh, talking to each other, sharing those stories. Those stories become very valuable. Well, you know, Brian, that that that's such a a uh, worthwhile suggestion. And and I've heard it before on this program. And one of the things that people should keep in mind, although sometimes people don't recognize this, that I don't think I've ever run into a pilot that wouldn't share the information that you're talking about. You just got to ask them. Yeah. And, and that, could, that could create, that could certainly um, uh, prevent uh, a lot of problems. And, and so thank you for that suggestion. I'm really uh, proud of you. I'm, pre I'm proud of what you're doing and your dedication to aviation safety, and I appreciate you being on the program. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program, and until next time, fly safe. Welcome back from the segment. I'm meteorologist Mike Ottenweller, and I'll be uh, taking over part of the uh, marine forecast for this evening. As you can see, for Tuesday, we're expecting southeast flow through the inner, inner passageways, about 20 knots, four foot seas. As you get towards Lynn Canal, expect 30 knots. Out of the north, six foot seas. For the coastal waters, southeast flow, six to seven foot seas, and winds will be about 25 knots until you get up towards the eastern gulf, looking for easterly winds, 20 knots, and six foot seas. Heading on into Wednesday, very similar conditions, southeast flow for the southeast portion of the inner passageways. 25 to 35 knots and 5 to 7 foot seas. And then as you get towards Lynn Canal, northerly winds, 30 knots and 6 foot seas. And then for the eastern gulf, expecting southeast winds, 35 knots, seas running between 11 and 14 feet, and up towards Yakutat, 35 knots out of the east at 14 feet. Moving towards south central, we can see for Tuesday, towards Prince William Sound, 15 knots out of the northeast and 3 foot seas. Towards the Cook Inlet, 15 knots out of the northeast and 3-foot seas as well. Picking up sea intensity in the winds and the seas a little bit as you move towards Shelikov Strait, winds will increase to 35 knots and seas building 12 to 14 feet in that area. Also, as you get into the uh, western portion of the Gulf, expect 25 to 35 knots out of the northeast to east towards Kodiak Island and seas running between 10 to 12 feet. Into Wednesday, conditions won't change a whole lot. Freezing spray will continue as you increase your winds from the northeast, 20 all the way up to 40 knots towards Shelikoff, and seas will be about 4 feet in Cook Inlet, and building all the way to 18 feet as you get into Shelikoff Strait. For Prince William Sound, very similar conditions, 15 knots out of the northeast, 3 foot seas, and freezing spray will be a factor along the Gulf Coast as well. Uh, winds will go from the east to the northeast, 35 knots, and seas running 14 to 15 feet. For the Alaska Peninsula, we're looking for 25 to 30 knots out of the northeast, 5 to 7 foot seas north of the peninsula, and on the south side, 40 to 35 knots from the east to northeast, seas generally between 15 to 16 feet. Conditions will remain very similar on Wednesday with winds becoming slightly more northerly, seas running very much the same, and speeds will increase slightly 30 to 35 knots for all the Alaska Peninsula. Stepping farther to the west, you can see Winds out of the northeast becoming northerly for the entire Aleutian chain. Central Aleutians will experience the strongest winds at about 45 knots. Seas will run between 18 and 23 feet in that region. 
and coming down a little bit to 14 feet out towards the western Aleutians. For Wednesday, becoming all northerly here for the eastern Aleutians and towards Unalaska Bay, 40 knots, seas running between 18 and 22 feet. And then as you get out towards the western Aleutians, calming down just a little bit uh, towards Shimia, 30 knots out of the northeast, seas 13 feet. For the west coast, you can see up towards St. Lawrence Island, northeast winds 25 knots. The ice edge has advanced far enough southward now that we are only seeing seas in the southern portion of this zone. Northeast winds 30 knots towards the Kuskokwim Bay. And then as you get offshore, north winds 30 knots and 30 knots near the Privilof Islands as well. Seas generally between 7 and 13 feet with some freezing spray south of the ice edge. And into Wednesday, all northerly winds 20 to 40 knots by the Pribilof Islands, seas running between 6 and 7 feet near the ice edge and building to 15 feet near the Pribilofs. Looking towards the Arctic coast, north winds just north of the Seward Peninsula at 15 knots, becoming west to, excuse me, southwest to northwest west all the way up towards the Arctic coast and running between 10 to 30 knots as you get over towards Kaktovik. And then looking into Wednesday, north winds 5 to 10 knots all near the Chukchi Sea and then becoming westerly and increasing slightly with speed but less strength than we saw earlier in the week, be 15 to 20 knots as you get over towards Dead Horse and Kaktovik. Recapping your weather for tonight into the next couple days, you can see our stationary boundary will continue to remain through this area with just low pressure center down south of the Alaska Peninsula creeping its way northward bringing snow into the Bristol Bay area and snow showers and blowing snow continue to bring blizzard conditions with our blizzard warning out for the Arctic coast. And into Tuesday more snow showers will move into Bristol Bay. The snow showers will taper off as the winds slacken over the Arctic coast. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.